I'm Carrie. This is Student Loan Chit Chat. For those of you that do not wish to stay for the after chat, I would like to thank you for joining me. For those of you that do wish to stay for the after chat, we are going to go ahead and we're going to start that right now. All right. Today's after chat, and it's kind of fitting, I think, in this case with this call. I'd actually want to do this a couple days ago, but in many cases, this call just fits our after chat perfectly. For those who don't know, the after chat is just a casual thing I like to do on occasion. Um dealing with money finance and sometimes maybe it'll even be a totally off the topic money finance issue but either way they're just little things and observations in life i like to chat about okay so i hope you'll stick around but if you can't or you don't want to i do thank you for joining us up to this point all right okay so today's after chat is uh something that happened during the week and i thought you know this would make a great after chat that is when people who are not disciplined at spending money, try to convince you to spend money. And this is actually perfect with this call, because what do we have here in this call? We have a guy who is clearly not good with his money, holds a lot of debt, and he just convinced someone else, forget that it's his fiance, let, let's just forget that, because she lent this to him even before they were married, okay? He was able to convince another person, in this case, you know, what might now be his wife, I don't know, okay, to um, release funds to pay off his debt. So I have a situation that occurred about a week ago with a particular person in my life. She never watches this channel, so I'm not even worried about that, okay? But basically, this is somebody who really, really likes to go out and eat a lot. Okay, I don't mean eat a lot as in, you know, they're overweight, not, not, not like that, but they like to spend a lot of money on food. They like to go to restaurants and they like to you know, order their glass of wine or their fancy drink. All right. Their steak meal or whatever it is, you know, they like to go and eat out a lot. This particular person um, is very bad with money, does not um, have financial goals and is actually way behind the eight ball for someone her age. And I will not mention her age to further keep her anonymity. Okay. But let's just say old enough that, you know, should know better by this particular age. All I'll say is above the age of 40. That's it. Okay. So this person asked me, hey, Carrie, you know, let's go out and eat. And I was like, no problem. You know, I'm happy to go, you know have a sandwich or something. My idea when I go out to eat is I don't like to um, go to restaurants that require tips because if a restaurant requires a tip, I'm always going to leave a tip. Okay. 15, 20%. And it doesn't even have to be stupendous service. It just has to be, did you bring me my food? Were you polite? You know, you, you, you know what I mean? Maybe refilled my water cup once or whatever. Okay. I'm not that, but I'm not that hard to please for a 15, 20% tip. Okay. You don't have to treat me like royalty or anything like some people may expect. No, nah, I just, you know, standard polite service. Okay. And I made the comment to the person, I said to her, I said, you know, I said, I really don't want to eat at this restaurant because it's a sit down restaurant. I said, I would much rather go to a place that is not a sit down, like, you know, Cheddar's, excuse me, like um, Culver's. Okay. Cheddar's is a sit down restaurant. It's a place here in Tampa. Kind of think of like maybe a slightly upscale version of Applebee's. All right. Um, just standard mid-grade dining fare. Okay. And then we got Culver's, which is just one of my favorite hamburger places in the world. And uh, I said to them, you know, I said, let's go ahead and do Culver's. I said, you know, we don't have to leave tip and all that. And this was my friend's response. My friend's response was, well, it's only a few dollars more. And I said, yeah, that's true. And then she went on, on to go. She goes, the average meal there is like 12 to $15. Now we've been to Cheddar's before. I go to Cheddar's maybe two times a year, probably three at best. Okay. And typically, you know, I go for special occasions with, you know, not, not it, to me, it's not just an everyday restaurant that I go to. All right. Um, and she's like, well, you know, the average meal there is like 12 to $15. And I said, true. Okay. I said, the average meal there is 12 to $15, but I also have to include a tip and I really just don't like the taste of water with my meal. So I order a soda. I just do. Okay. That's just how I eat. I don't drink alcohol because I don't like that. And she said, but that's only a few more dollars. 
And I said, that is true. I said, but those few dollars add up. Now, this is someone I've known long enough. We can have a pretty frank discussion. So I said, so if you would like to go out and have a hamburger with me, I said, I will be happy to go to Culver's, but I'm not going to pay. You know, I'll go to Culver's. I go to a hamburger, French fries and a soda for about $10 versus going to Cheddar's ordering a hamburger, fries, and soda, and that's going to run me probably closer to $15 plus tip on top. We're looking at an, you know, $18, $20 bill. And she was like, she just couldn't see what the big deal was. She goes, that's only six to eight bucks. And so I got a little frustrated and I said, six to $8. Well, that adds up every time you say it's only six to $8 at the end of the year. That pretty much ended our conversation, but we did make it to Culver's. Okay. But here's the point. And it's something that I think those of us who are, who are uh, very cognizant with our finances, we're very aware of what's going on. We work to control them. Um, We want to either achieve debt freedom, or even if we don't have debt freedom, okay, we at least want to be able to make sure we can control the bills we have, okay, that we're not going to lose sleep over our mortgage, our car or whatever else. Okay. Something that I realized is, and this, and this call was actually perfect for this after chat. People who are not good with money, people who do not have an interest in saving money, tracking where it goes. And I'm, I admit I'm not the world's best tracker, but I'm good enough at it. I did, I did manage to get debt free. Okay. But when I say track it, even though I don't write it all down and everything, I, I still know where it goes clearly. Okay. I know where it goes. All right. Um, People who are not interested in those things will always be present to try to convince you that you shouldn't be interested in it either. And they will make comments like, oh, come on. It's not that it's not that much more. It's just a few extra dollars. Well, if you fall for that every time someone tells you that, guess what? You're going to be $58,000 in a HELOC loan like this gal is because somebody who is not good with money convinced you to not be good with your money because it fulfills their end agenda. And their end agenda is they want that immediate gratification. They want someone to do it with, and you can potentially be just the sucker to join them. I know that kind of is a lot, right? But I know she got kind of frustrated because to her, it's just a six to $8 difference. And at one point I actually broke it down to her. Like I said, this is someone I've known for a long time. I said, what am I going to get for an extra six to $8? And and again, and this is someone who, who habitually overspends. Okay. This is somebody who habitually overspends. Like I said, she'll never watch. She she doesn't, she doesn't watch this type of videos. Okay. Um, and to her, that six to eight dollar, that six to eight, not six to eight, but six T O eight, that six to eight dollar difference to her is no big deal. But I want you to imagine you do that every week. Oh, well, that's just an extra eight dollars. Like, hell, let's just go with an extra six, six, 12, 18, 24. By the end of the month, you can spend, let's just say 25 bucks on just, that's just an extra six to eight dollars. Do that at the end of the year. You got a few hundred. Now do that over multiple things that you do in your life. Oh, that's just a six. That's just an extra six or eight dollars. We'll go to the nighttime movie instead of the early matinee. Oh, well, that's just a, you know, six to eight dollars. We'll go order a fancy hamburger at a restaurant that we have to pay a tip versus just eating one at Culver's. And guess what? We will still eat a burger and we will still walk out full. Oh, that's just six to $8. See, here's the problem I have with that. If you, if financial, um, success, okay. Is a lifestyle kind of like my fitness is a lifestyle. Although I did not go to the gym today because it's a holiday off. And sometimes I like to break that routine a little bit. Makes me feel like I got to enjoy the holiday a little bit more. Okay. But fine. But going to the gym is a lifestyle for me. I do it rain, shine. It, It just, it doesn't matter. I do it. If financial fitness is a lifestyle, which it is. All right. What you practice with the little dollars in my opinion, is going to be what you do with the big dollars. Let me give you an example, okay? When I bought my condo, I told my realtor, don't even think, I said to her nicely, of course, because I just, I absolutely adore her. Don't even think of showing me a place that's beyond 
a hundred and twenty five thousand. That was it. That was as high as I was willing to go. And, and she held by it. She held by it. She never did. And we settled on a place that was a hundred thousand. If you have lived your life going, well, this is just six to eight dollars, six to eight dollars more. Guess what's going to happen when you make big purchases? Pretty soon it's going to become, well, I know I said I wanted a hundred and twenty five thousand dollar condo, but this is only a hundred and forty thousand and I like it so much more. Now you're 15 grand above what you intended. Except that. 140,000, but then you see since it's 150, oh, you know what? But for just $10,000 more, I can have this 150,000. And, and it's just so cute. I mean, look at the balcony. If you can't put stops in your life on the little financial decisions that you make on a daily basis that are seemingly harmless, but add up, creep up over time, how are you going to be able to live a financial lifestyle where you can put stops on the big things, the big things that make you go, oh, gee, I feel like a kid at a candy store as you walk into the car dealership. You feel like a kid at the candy store as you look at all these different houses, condos, townhouses, ranch style homes. You, you weren't able to stop yourself from spending eight bucks on a burger. What makes you think you're going to stop yourself from spending an extra $50,000 on a piece of property you probably didn't need? What makes you think you're going to stop yourself when you're with a group of friends and everybody's slurping down the oysters and having all the Mai Tais or whatever. I don't drink alcohol, okay? And you know you've budgeted, you know, maybe $40 for this event. But, you know, everybody's having a good time. So that $40 becomes a $75 bill. It's amazing to me, okay? I almost caved into her request. I almost did. I was like, okay, Carrie, you know, I, I'm afraid of coming off like a cheapskate. I'm afraid of coming. You know, it, well, I won't say I'm afraid. That's the wrong word. Nobody wants to come off like a cheapskate, like you can't have a good time and you can't have a good party. And I almost gave into that request. I almost did and thought, okay, you know what? I'll go ahead and do it this one time for her. And, th and then I went, wait a minute, wait a minute. Let, 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 let's, let, let's time out this. Let's time out. And I realized you know what? I'm allowing someone who has no savings account, who doesn't own property, who has more bills than they can count, who refuses to live below their means. Yes, this is all true. Okay. I'm going to cave into that. I'm going to get this person to convince me that I should spend an extra eight bucks so I can be in their company. I have a gal pal friend, another friend. Um, she and I can have the best time together doing nothing but sitting in front of Wawa's on a cool, you know, day in Florida. Okay. When we're not sweating to death and we will shoot the breeze for an hour. You know, she, she, she might be drinking her Pepsi. I'm drinking my Pepsi. You know, one or both of us might have a little Wawa's pretzel. We've each spent less than four bucks because you know what? We're there for each other's company. We're not there for the food. And what dawned on me is that people who are financially careless with their money, oftentimes the company comes second to whatever the actual event is that they want to attend. Have you ever known people like that? You ever known people like that? Okay. When I get together with my Pepsi friend, that's why I call her my Pepsi friend. We get together at Wawa's. Okay. Uh, when I get together with her, we get together because we actually want to see each other. We don't give a crap if it's a Panera, Wawa's, um, Culver's, the middle of a ball, Barnes and Nobles. We're not there to spend the money to get that immediate reward. That's actually not why we're in each other's presence. We're gal pals because we want to see each other and we have things to discuss. And that's the purpose of getting together. So for both of us, it's, I, I would never call her up and say, Hey, you know, let's go spend a whole bunch of money on dinner. Now, does that mean we don't ever have a nice dinner together? Sure. Rarely. 
Because really, we're both very financially conscious. We each have our financial goals. We want to adhere to those goals. We want to meet them. We want to create them. But this other gal that I know, the one that almost convinced me to give up an extra six or eight dollars, doesn't have those same goals, doesn't have the same desire. And they're more than happy to try to convince you who has those financial goals that j just this one time, okay, spend a little extra. But are they asking you to spend that extra because they want to be with you? Or are they asking you to spend that extra because there is something they really want to do. They want someone to do it with, and you're just the sucker to pay the extra to do it. This is why I said in this call, like I said, I, I didn't plan for this um, after chat to be with this particular call. Um, I actually don't, for the most part, I don't, I, I don't determine after chats till after the original video, video is done because sometimes I think a video will be 15 minutes that turns out to be an hour. And it's like, okay, well, I'm too tired to do an after chat. So I don't really announce, I don't really determine after chats until after the video is done. But it dawned on me that I almost fell into her trap of just six to eight dollars and I kind of got mad at myself because I was like dang she almost got you to give it up I told her I wasn't going I said I'm not going to do cheddars I said um you know and it doesn't mean I won't ever do it I have friends that I'll go to bonefish grill with okay it's a group of two of us actually it's three of us okay two of my gal pals and we are like family to each other and when we go it is a big event it is a big deal okay heck I'll up that bill to about $25 I think we do that probably about four times a year that is a big event because the three of us we're like family to each other and it's our chance we literally go around the table your turn your turn your turn what's going on in each of your lives okay it's well it's not it's it's about us getting together as friends, okay? But the food still remains second. But because we are we are like family to each other and we're very, very close to each other, as, you know, as family members, you know, we like to kind of kick it up a little, okay? That's different. That to me is special occasion. But just an everyday, hey, let's go grab a burger up the street and you want to go to the place that's going to cost us $18 to eat a burger and we could just go to Culver's and do it for 10. That's like two meals for the price of one. Okay, I could eat twice out on $18 for $18. I could provide myself, you know, four nights of dinner at home, cook up a good macaroni and cheese or make a nice, you know, um, oh, I don't know, chili. All right. What not? Don't allow people who don't care about their finances to take your finances and tank them. And that's what I realized I, I almost did. And, and again, you know, somebody who really doesn't care about money would go, Jesus, this is all over eight bucks. It's not that it's over eight bucks. You're missing it. If you think that's what this is about, it's not over the $8. It's over understanding that as I have a fitness lifestyle, I also live a financial lifestyle. A fitness lifestyle is met for me because I work out five days a week. I used to work out six, but, you know, I am getting a little older and it's down to about five now. OK, sometimes six, but it's basically down to five days a week, which is, you know, 90 minute workouts pretty much each time. OK, so well above average. But if somebody tried to convince me and say, oh, you know what? Y y you only need to work out four days a week. It's okay. Work out four days a week. Well, but guess what happens? Four days a week becomes three days a week becomes two days a week becomes, ah, oh, you know, screw it. We won't work out at all. Well, that $8 that you just spent unnecessarily that you didn't feel you were getting any reward for. Okay. That's just in one meal. How many times are you going to spend an extra six or $8 in the rest of your life? In the other areas of your life. How many times are you going to say, ah, it's not that big of a deal? Because that's literally what I was told. Oh, it's not that much. Sure, to someone who doesn't have financial acumen and doesn't care about where their money's going, it's not that much. But to those of us that understand that we have made financial mistakes in the past, we want to correct those mistakes. Well, much like fitness, we got to do it every day. We have to do it with every thought. Every time I use that credit card. Yes, I do use my credit card for my 2% cash back. And I have no problem with it. Okay. Um, but every time I, you know, 
send money out the door, I am asking myself, what am I getting in return? And I figured out for eight extra bucks, I would be paying $3 for an overpriced soda and about $4 in tip, so to speak. And I said, that's not worth it. That is not worth it. So think about that when someone who is not as, uh, when, I won't say financially careless, when, when you know people who really don't care about their money that much and they want you to go and spend your money to do something with them, ask yourself if you're really getting any value for that. If you find you're getting value for it, then great, okay? Go ahead and spend it. That's a worthwhile extra expense. I get value. Even when we go to a slightly, I'm on my budget, okay? $25 for me is a lot for dinner, all right? Um, for one person, you know, when I get together with my extended family and the three of us girls get together for about three hours and we chat, 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 all of that stuff. I love it. That's wonderful. Okay. That to me is worth it. But to just say, Hey, let's run down the street on a quick, you know, night and just go grab a burger real quick. will be done in an hour. Is that worth it to me? No, it's not. Don't allow other people to get you off your, your financial goal. Cause if you can't control the small financial decisions you make every day. Um, you can't control it or you think it's unimportant to control it. Okay. If you can't control the small financial things you do each day, how are you going to control the big decisions that must be made? The hard decisions that must be made. And remember that things all have a domino effect. You say, Hey, you know what? I'll go ahead and I'll spend an extra $50,000 on a piece of property. I didn't really plan on spending. Well, now have you looked at the tax implications of that extra property? Have you looked at the maintenance implications of that extra property? All right. You start factoring that in all of a sudden, it's not just a $50,000 piece of property anymore. You bought, you also bought a bigger tax bill and everything else to go with it. So that's something to consider. Okay. All right. I'm Carrie. This is Student Loan Chit Chat. I would like to thank you for joining me today for today's Dave Ramsey phone call and for, of course, the after chat. I hope you guys continue to have a wonderful rest of the day. Um, if you have the day off, great. If you do not have the day off, this will be your bedtime story biz being uploaded early. All right. I will talk to you guys later. Have a great rest of your Monday. Goodbye.